or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. The phone lines are open. Call in with your questions and comments at 220-978. There you go. Exercise is king. Nutrition is queen. Put them together and you've got a kingdom. Jack LaLanne. Who was a chiropractor? The only way to get fat off is to eat less and exercise more. Yeah, we're going to talk about that today. I mean, that, that might be true for Jack Lane, but things have changed. Probably millions of Americans got up this morning with a cup of coffee, a cigarette, and a donut. No wonder why they're sick and fouled up, he said. <laughs> Do you know how many calories are on butter? And cheese and ice cream? <sighs> Jacqueline, it was legend. Are obese. Good morning, Stuart, Florida. My name is Dr. Tred Rissacker, and I am a doctor of chiropractic, and I am qualified to share everything that I'm telling you here today. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not a life coach. I'm not a wellness enthusiast. I'm a board-certified, National Board of Chiropractic certified healthcare practitioner in the state of Florida, and that's a gift. Uh, you know, Today's about diabetes, okay? If you're just tuning in and you've been watching my shows for a while, you know, my, my goal is to explain how today's uh, new technology, mainly lasers, medical lasers, are being used to, uh, to just change the whole face of healthcare. I used, to, I used to say they had a few good points going for them, and now I'm starting to learn that they are just, they can treat every part of your body. It's a just... It just blows my mind when I, when I read about it. And I've been experiencing and demonstrating the use of uh, red light and low-level laser therapy called photobiomodulation in the form of red light, near-infrared, infrared, and far-infrared wavelengths. And these wavelengths are beneficial to your health. They stimulate immune system repair. They can create endorphins and serotonin. They create neurotransmitters. They uh, that allow you to reduce stress, reduce, you know, high blood sugar. Uh, it goes on and on of what laser and this energy can do. And, of course, some of it is in the form of infrared, uh, far infrared saunas, infrared light beds, uh, handheld devices. They, they have, they're just scratching the surface on what they can do. And as a result of this, you know, these lasers, I decided to change my focus as a doctor of chiropractic from neck and back care, which you're fairly, pretty familiar with, uh, you know, uh, having adjustments, to uh, helping people with nutrition and wellness and, uh, you know, why they're sick, you know. And, and of course, a chiropractic adjustment will always be the, you know, one of my, my most important things I do for myself and for my patients, if I'm able to long as I can walk and uh, but I'm starting to find out that uh, we're really messed up on food I mean we're really confused about food and about diseases and and you know and uh, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 2000 and gosh I guess it was 2009 2010 2010 uh, about 12 years ago, I, I found out that I had very high blood sugar. I didn't realize my blood sugar was high. And uh, over time, it was just getting worse and worse. I had put on some weight and uh, got married. So things were good. You know, I wasn't miserable or unhappy. I opened up the 
slim body laser spa as an aesthetic spa to help people to look better and to feel better just using uh, this new technology and uh, hadn't really embraced the uh, the nutritional aspect of the use of lasers and how you know how much how important that is and then after having success I, I can't even pinch myself over the years because uh, people do want to look better and feel better and, and oftentimes they're looking for a hack something that's quick something that's fast in other words, they don't want to put all the necessary work in. And as I'm maturing in my, in my practice and in my professional life, I'm realizing that even if you put the work in, as far as diet and exercise and monitoring your, your, your blood sugar, you can still fail. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 there's, there's other factors that are making us sick. And, uh, you know, gosh darn it, I'm, I'm, trying hard to find them. You know, it's, 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 it's more than what you're putting in your mouth. It's more than, you know, your genetics. It's more than your friends. It's can even be, you've been exposed to poisons in our environment. And that can lead you to be sick. Even though you've been like Mr. Vegan or Mrs. Vegan, exercising, never put any weight on, you know, never drank alcohol. <laughs> All of a sudden, you get gassed by a truck pouring uh, tar on the roadbed, and you're stuck in traffic, and you're uh, waiting for the, the trucks to clear, and you get a big whiff of that black, that tar smell, and we are all smelled it. We don't think much of it. That stuff is a carcinogen. It is super, super toxic, and it does never comes out of your body once you breathe it in. It's stuck. It stays in there like, like sludge. Like, like an oil would, like fat would. It, it, it's attracted to fat. And since we carry a lot of fat, your bodies are full of a lot of poisons and toxins just from the environment. So, you know, my, my emphasis has been on, you know, trying to help people to easily lose weight, but really, uh, you know, to look better and to feel better at the same time. But now it's starting to switch more into basic core nutritional principles because of the fact that, uh, you know, every, there's a lot of places that are doing this body sculpting. They're, they're really not doctor's offices. They're, they're estheticians and facial specialists. And right now the, uh, the law is very uh, liberal. They're allowed to uh, do these medical procedures. I think it will end for them pretty soon because, you know, they're not doctors and they don't have the ability to talk about nutrition and food which is you know again you know exercise is king nutrition is queen and when you put them together you've got a kingdom and when you fail with nutrition or you're not exercising you're going to put up extra belly fat and extra areas and you're going to want you're going to look for help some some well and uh these machines these red light machines and the cool sculpting and the uh, the hot lasers they they do reduce the subcutaneous uh compartment and and some are more dangerous than others some have side effects more than others some are completely innocuous and have no damage at all and because i guess because there's money to be made is a whole bunch of people jumping into the business everywhere you look now you know, laser lipo, lipo, laser, laser lipo, and uh, it's very confusing. So uh, I'm here to make sense of this cr crazy uh, genre, new, new, new situation we're dealing with now. Now, if you're, if you're someone that doesn't go on the internet and you don't have a Facebook account or you're not really out there uh, socializing and you probably don't know anything of what I'm mentioning to you because <laughs> it's, you know, we're not, uh, the newspapers aren't, talking about this anymore. In fact, we're not getting any of our information from the newspapers. Uh, it's all coming now through the internet. And what's really sad about, you know, there's, there's great parts about the internet, don't get me wrong. What I'm starting to notice about internet information is it is now AI, artificial intelligence, in an effort to sell more advertising when people go online, you're Everything that you like to look at, the things that you search for, the clicks, you know, the videos you watch on kittens or whatever it might be, doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, those, those 
likes and those habits are now being sent back to you almost like a boomerang. They come right back to you again. So if you watched a video on kittens and you know puppies playing, you're going to get nothing but kittens and puppies playing uh, in every single time you do a search. There's something's going to come up with that because you searched it once. And over, over several years, your identification on the internet is only going to allow you to see a very narrow band of information. And what started out, in my opinion, as one of the most incredibly greatest trans, you know, transfers of, of information being available to people was the use of the internet. But what you find out is if you don't know this specific item that you want to see, if you don't know the, the, the term for it, if you don't know, you know exactly what it is you're looking for, the algorithms are just going to give you the same old stuff you've been looking at for the last, since it started. And that is not okay. How can you get anything new if everybody you talk to, you've already spoken with? right? So, all right. So my name is Dr. Tred Rissacker. Uh, yes, I own the Slim Body Laser Spa. It is a superstar rocket ship, uh, super fast rocket sled into the uh, fourth dimension of, of, of body sculpting, of overall health and wellness. There's so many parts to uh, why we get sick, why we put on body fat health problems that come from it and the frustration and the feeling that people have when they're when they're in trouble it's it's a horrible feeling and uh, and you know I've, I've experienced it myself and uh, and you know you, you want to reach out you want to ask for help and there's people in your life family members who are dependent on you and they love you but they've heard it before I've heard it before. Yeah, yeah, so you say, so you say. Yet, there you are. So, you know, where do you get that help? Who do you talk to? You know, uh, and then you end up at the doctor's offices and, and, and uh, realizing that you have to undergo procedures that you never would have thought you'd ever have to do or be put on medications that, you know, I remember in my younger years as a, as a chiropractor, and I'm still a chiropractor, I'm still fairly young, but people would always say, uh, I, don't, I don't believe in medicine. I, I don't believe in taking drugs or medicine. I'd be like, okay, uh, today you don't, but have you been challenged? You know, have you, have you had a, a weird pain show up or a, a symptom or something that you don't know what it is and it didn't go away with a couple nights rest and some alcohol, <laughs> you know, it's still there? And you end up at the doctor's office and, you know, and the MRIs come back and the study comes back and he looks at you and says, there's no, we can't cure this, but we can relieve the symptoms. And if you don't take these pills or these shots or these injections or wear these things, you're going to die prematurely and probably in a miserable, slow death. Okay, so do I, do I take the drugs now, now? Am I a believer now? Nobody gets up in the morning and they're young and healthy and said, oh, I can't wait to grow up someday and be put on all these meds. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. What the hell, you know, that's why they got them. I mean, I believe in Pfizer and Roche and, you know, Abbott Laboratories. They wouldn't steer me wrong. Why would they give me something that wouldn't help me? And... Uh, and hence you get into this, this horrible, oh, just horrible feeling about it. And uh, one of the benefits, I think, if, you know, if I had to summarize if my whole career as a, as a, as a person at the Slim Body Laser Spa, as a chiropractor, is, is I have a certain amount of compassion and empathy for, for you, for us, because I've been there. I, I, you know, humility is having the same realization that, I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. Better people than I have made mistakes doing things that I think I could pull off, you know? And, uh, and you know, you can learn from everybody. You can learn what people say, even from, you know, the drunk in the street who's laying in the gutter. You can learn a lesson from that person. That's humility. And, uh, and that, you know, you don't have, maybe you don't have all the answers, 
Maybe you do, but you're willing to listen to other people even though you think you do. And uh, the strength behind Slim Body Laser Spa is my desire to help you get through whether it's your, your, your body dysmorphia, unhappiness with how your body looks, uh, whether it's accumulated fat pockets that are, you know, literally creating health risks and problems. Maybe there's, it all comes down to uh, really bad choices with food. And, uh, you know, or maybe it's something that, uh, you know, you've hurt your body in some way. Uh, maybe you've had a back injury or you've got a knee injury or something that precludes you from exercising. So without the exercise, you've assumed that there's just no hope. And uh, I, take, I take an interest in that. You know, I want to know about it because I can put the laser on people and get the inches off even if they were gagged. You know, if, if they were completely, well, that might be good for losing weight, a, a mouth gag. But, you know, in other words, the laser technology works so well, it is so predictable that you wouldn't even have to talk to somebody as long as they followed a few simple suggestions. Don't eat food two hours before the laser. Don't eat food two hours afterwards because you're going to burn off the calories the laser releases. Uh, be willing to, you know eat a smart diet, but even that isn't important, isn't that important because you'll still lose inches. You just need more treatments. However, you know, that's not really what makes me happy. It's just that you come in and, and get inches off. What makes me happy and what I am attracted to doing is helping people overcome their, their, their health problems. And, uh, and it's not by sending them to doctors for injections and tissue removal or organ transplants. You know, I mean, that, those are, that's, the, that's the realm of medical emergency crisis care. You know, there's nobody as good as crisis care as our medical system. And, and I've been there, uh, you know, for my auto accident. You know, most of you that have heard me on the radio, you know, I was, I was in a really hard impact uh, in July, July 15th of this year. And it was, you know, last year, and it was a head-on, and it was 50 miles an hour on US-1 at that stupid Eugenia, Eugenia and uh, US-1, you know, that where that kid in the Tesla crashed and killed those people. It would, four weeks, well, you know, two months before that, that's the same intersection where I got clocked. And uh, that put me into uh, the medical situation and put me into the hospital, and I had an injury to my right foot, hit my head, and, uh, you know, welcome to the world of uh, Cleveland Clinic. <laughs> Pretty quick. And uh, great people. I never I have anything to complain. They, they help me so much. But it has changed how I look at situations and people. And, you know, it just, it just it's me. I'm, I'm not going to let it make me a negative. It's just going to make me a better person. So we got to talk about this diabetes. All right. This is the most pressing health issue that I see happening that can be prevented and is really difficult to put you, to, to, to just, just to wrap your mind around how serious it can be and how, and just how many of you out there, and, and I'm not, I'm not making this up, 40% of you that are listening to me right now are probably hyperglycemic. In other words, your blood sugar is too high for your age, for your level of exercise, and for what, what it is where you are in your life. It's too high. And at that 40% that are, that are too high, within, by the time you're 50 to 60 years old to 65, you will be in full-blown diabetes. And then the health problems come. Then comes, you know, the high, you know, the, 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 the problems with diabetes, the problems with your feet, the neuropathy. Then comes the, uh, the symptoms of, uh, of, of, you know, tissue don't heal. The blood supply becomes a problem. And it used to believed, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define exactly what diabetes is here in a second because it's very easy to understand. I'm also going to talk about some of the etiologies, how it occurs, why it happens. And 
at the end of this talk, which will be, you know, 10 minutes on the hour here, 10 before 10, uh, I'm going to go over some new information that I found out about diabetes and type 2 and how losing weight is simply one part of it. It's a very important tool, but it, it, it's not going to solve the whole problem. Hmm. Everybody thinks, well, you're diabetic, you must be fat. Well, it's not true. There's a lot of reasons for diabetes. You can have uh, liver damage from alcohol. You could have uh, damage from uh, just eating too much sugar. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, being too fat. It can also be genetic markers. You can be poisoned. Toxins can create diabetes. And, uh, however, for most of us out there, it has to do with uh, improper food choices, bad food. So, I was, you know, I was reading a book, The Eight-Week Blood Sugar Diet, right here. I'll hold it up in front of the camera. I'm going I'm to do this because my blood sugar the last few weeks has been high. And, uh, and I'm taking my blood sugar and I'm taking my metformin and exercising. I've cut my body fat down and I'll be darned if I didn't the other day get up and check my blood sugar. It was over 300. Now, if you know anything about blood sugar, that's really high. And, you know, and I did everything I was supposed to do. And it really just kind of rocked me as I, I got to find, I got to find more of a solution for this. I, I can't, I, I can't just rely on, on transitory uh, taking meds and then checking my blood sugar only when I think I need to. And, you know, I, I got to figure, I got to figure this out. So I was turning the pages of a scientific journal, you know, and looking through it. And there's one thing that leaped out to me. And did you know that they did a study of weight loss, bariatric surgery? You know, if, if you don't know what bariatric surgery is, is with weight loss, people that are in extreme uh, obesity, uh, they're doing bariatric surgery, which could be, you know, removing the stomach, putting in a lap band, putting a stapling. In. There's different processes, but all of them are carried out on really obese people with type 2 diabetes. Did you know that they show a graph of blood sugar levels immediately following the surgery? Within days of the operation, their blood sugar levels had returned to normal, and many were able to come off of all their medication for blood sugar within a week to two weeks after having bariatric surgery. Now, I've heard this before. I've had people tell me this before. Yeah, my husband, he was morbidly obese and he was diabetic and he lost his toe and you know on and on and uh, had the bariatric surgery and the next within a week his blood sugar his diabetes was was gone it was cured now this is striking because most doctors believe that type 2 diabetes is a lifelong irreversible disease i i believe that i believe you know i did believe that I still kind of believe that because mine has not gone away and I found out about it 10 years ago. And uh, however, you know, it's not for certain reasons. And, and so, you know, people are usually advised that they have a condition that requires first pills, which is where I'm at. You know, the debt metformin and the glipicide and the, and the nutritional changes. And then they're saying possibly insulin and that you got to get used to living with diabetes. <laughs> like, like you got to live with it. Yet, these people that have bariatric surgery who are completely metabolically challenged from being morbidly obese, these are the people that are some of the sickest in our, in our country, their diabetes is gone as soon as they remove the stomach. So, you know, and why did the blood sugar levels return so rapidly? That would be my question, you know, and it, it kind of fits in with a theory that I've been thinking about that type two diabetes is simply the result of too much fat in the liver and pancreas, and that interferes with the production of insulin. So we are, I'm gonna explain that a little bit. Uh, you do know about your digestive organs and you have your liver and you have your pancreas. Now, your liver is the major organ that detoxifies the body. All of your venous blood, you know, your arterial blood is, you breathe oxygen, you breathe in air, and your lungs 
replace the carbon dioxide, which is the metabolic of respiration, and then you, put, you, you breathe in oxygen. So really, when you're breathing, you're clearing your body of CO2, of carbon dioxide. And then, and then you reoxygenate the blood. Well, when the blood has oxygen, it also has nutrients which are put into it through the digestive tract. And then this blood goes into all of your tissues. It perfuses every part of your body. And then what happens is the venous, then it turns into what we call venous blood. So there's the red arterial blood, and you've got the blue blood, which you would look at on your hand, and it's because there's no oxygen. There's, no, uh, uh, hemo there's less hemoglobin in it, so it's not red, it's blue for the most part. And, uh, and all that blood has to be cleaned by the liver and the spleen and filtered by the kidneys. And then so when the liver detoxifies it in the spleen and then the liver and then the kidneys allow you to pass the urine out, you know, this is how the body heals itself. Well, the pancreas is a little gland. It's an organ which sits just underneath the stomach. So, you know, the stomach is your mixer, like a little food mixer. <laughs> when you eat food, you chew it up, it goes down into your, through your trachea and into your stomach. And then your stomach is like a mixer. And it grinds it up through these peristaltic actions. It also produces acids uh, in order to help digest the food. Well, then that, that, that lump of food is squirted into the duodenum, which is the next part after the stomach. And depending on the amount of fat that's within that food and, and the macronutrients that the body is able to detect, there's all kinds of cells that respond and tell the brain how much fat is in there and how much carbohydrate and how much protein is in there. And then what it'll do is it'll send messages to the pancreas to secrete enzymes necessary to break down food and it produces insulin. So within the pancreas, it's a very, very complex organ which super aids in digestion. And I promise you, if you have pancreatic failure, and it's a cancer, your chances of survival are very slim. That's what Michael Landon died of, pancreatic cancer. It's very, you know, the pancreas is, they can't replace it. They can't cut parts of it off. You know, the liver can be resected and transferred liver. They can put new livers in people and stuff. They can't do that with the pancreas. It's very important. But what it does is it produces the insulin necessary to keep your blood sugar manageable. So... What we believed was that type 2 diabetes was the result of too much fat. When you eat and you absorb too much fat and you become obese and your body fat goes from 20 to 25 percent over 30, 35 to 40 percent, hear me out because this is where we're at, a lot of you. This excess fat is in all of your organs. It isn't just in your skin and hanging out over your belt. It surrounds your heart. It infiltrates your liver because the liver is dealing with processing this fat. So the liver becomes infiltrated with fat. It's called a fatty liver. Same with the pancreas, it becomes fatty. And I believe, I was taught that this is a big theory as to why people have, uh, you know, that this comes, this is the creation of the diabetes. Yet, <laughs> if you do bariatric surgery and you cut the stomach out, the diabetes goes away. What if, I, I thought the liver was full of fat, you know? So it's something that it's, it's, it's been a little bit confusing and to try to understand it. But I can tell you this, that merely eating had suddenly be cut down. So if this theory is right. Type 2 diabetes should be able to be completely reversed by food restriction alone. Science moves slowly and carefully. Any hypothesis has to be tested rigorously. Now, what we found out is, is that if you really want to get rid of your type 2 diabetes, and you can in just eight weeks, you need to lose substantial amounts of weight and return blood sugar to normal. And to remain free of diabetes and keep the weight off, this eight-week blood sugar diet 
has shown that it's possible to reverse a disease that is still widely seen as irreversible. Uh, so it's really about blood sugar here, you guys. And uh, yes, I have a laser. You can come in three times a week for three weeks, lose massive amounts of inches, drop three dress sizes if you're a female, two pant sizes if you're a guy, uh, fit better in your clothing. And at the same time, you know, we're gonna help you with nutrition if you will allow us to. Some people, they don't want you to help them with nutrition for whatever reason. Others are very much, you know, they want help. They realize they're very confused. So our program includes a nutritional evaluation, BMI, BMR, uh, body fat percentages, resting caloric intake, uh, hydration, how hydrated you are, and then uh, a full history of, uh, you know, diabetes or any other metabolic situations you might be under. And from there, we can make decisions based on your health, not just the fact that you want to lose two pant sizes. <laughs> but if all you want to do is lose two pant sizes, we can help you there too. But so, so hear me out with this. My phone number, you know, this is, you're listening to Dr. Tred Rissacker, Slim Body Laser Spa, Health and Wellness Show. I'm located on East Ocean Boulevard in Stewart, right across the street from the Fresh Market, uh, down the road from Hutchison Island. We have free consultations available, eight to six. We're open five days a week. We're closed Saturday and Sunday right now. Doc's got to have a couple days off. And uh, we can help you. We can help you with this diabetes and these metabolic syndromes. Or I can just refer you to somebody that can help you. You know, I'm a gatekeeper. I'm, I'm a doctor. And, and I know most of the doctors and professionals in our area. So if you're looking for some help, give us a call. Slim Body Laser Spa. Okay, so we got to talk about this diabetes. So what diabetes is, is simply Latin for high blood sugar. So if you wanted to say somebody, you had, oh, I've got high blood sugar, you would, you would use the term diabetes. That's all it means, that your sugar is high. Now, why is blood sugar, what we know, how important it is? So what, what basically happens is we need nutrition from the plants. You know, we need to eat food for energy. That's why you eat food. And the food you eat is in the form of macronutrients. They're large macronutrients. The macro means large. So that would be your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. Those are macronutrients. And those nutrients cannot be absorbed directly into the body as, as food. They have to be broken down into what they call micronutrients. So when you eat a piece of steak or you eat some vegetables and there's all, you know, there's all kinds of things in there, your body chews it up, breaks it up, breaks it down into smaller particles, and then the body's digestion starts to separate the parts that the body can use for energy and the parts that it has to remove through, through, the, uh, you know, through the excretory program, you know, through the body's waste products. However, the part which can give you energy is called blood sugar, <laughs> okay? So, so when you eat it, it ca you can't power your cells. It has to be broken down into what they call glucose. Now, glucose is a term for blood sugar, okay? And glucose is really very similar to sucrose, which is called table sugar. And then you've got fructose, which is another sugar, and you can think of fruit as being the sugar that's associated with fruits. So there's fructose, there's sucrose, and there's glucose. Again, glucose is the blood sugar that circulates in your bloodstream, and this is what gives you energy, and you get energy from glucose, which came from the food you ate. And then the sucrose is table sugar, which when you eat it, it turns into glucose really fast. In other words, the body needs no help breaking it down because in one quick swoop of a, of a chemical reaction with, with water, you can turn it into glucose. Now that might seem like an advantage 
because your body doesn't have to work very hard to make it into glucose, but it's really a serious disadvantage if you do it too much, okay? Occasionally, like your ancestors 20,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, they didn't have fruit all year round. They had fruit in the summer. In the end of the summer, when the fall, the fruit was ripe for the most part. And then winter, they were without any sugar for them, you know, because of the fruit, they couldn't, you know. Today, when I go down to uh, Fresh Market or I go to the Sprouts or Publix and it's winter time, the fruit I'm looking at, it didn't, wasn't grown here in Florida. It was, well, it could have been. We're, we're warm here. Most of it was grown in other countries because we can't, you know, it's cold here. So what we're doing is we're overwhelming ourselves with sugar all day long, all year, summer, fall, winter, spring, because, you know, we've been sold that that fruit is uh, something healthy to take. You know, it's antioxidants. It's got all these nice bioflavonoids. And that's true but it's got a load of sugar in it, you guys. And your body can't handle all that sugar, so it's going to store it as glucose. And since you're not burning it as energy, any glucose that's not burned as energy is stored by the liver in the form of glycogen, so your body is, turns into glycogen. But once you get a certain amount of glycogen stored and you only can burn a certain amount working, you know, exercising, the extra sugar calories that you're eating, those are turned into body fat. And, you know, and the idea is, is that you might run out of food at the end of this eating time and, you know, you're going to need that fat to survive. That's how your body, why it builds fat. Yet, since we're never really going without food, you know, the body fat is never really being burned so you might still have the same body fat that you put on when you were in your 20s or, or even when you were young, and because you have never really backed off, you're still carrying those same fat calories with you. And what the body does is amazing. So you make fat right after a meal. You don't make fat after uh, two weeks of, you know, you know, you make, you, make, you make fat after a meal. And uh, that means every four to five hours, we need to eat. If you eat at eight o'clock in the morning, you're going to be hungry at 12 because in that four to five hours, you have digested whatever you ate at eight o'clock. So at 12 o'clock, you're going to eat some more food and then you digest it, assimilate it, burn it. By the end of six, you know, from 12 to six, now you need to eat again. And at six o'clock, we eat more food, and uh, some of it is burned as energy. If, if you eat too much, it's going to be stored as fat. And it happens after each meal, not after two weeks of overeating. Although, of course. So, so now you've got this, this instant, this, this, this machine, which is, will never squander a calorie, by the way. When you, when you put food in your mouth, if you choose to put it in your mouth, your body has to handle it. It does not come out undigested. You do not poop out undigested food. Now, it might be partially undigested because you ate so much, but really it's digested to the point where the body has gotten its nutrients out and it's gotten rid of the matter that it can't use for life, and that's, you know, your bowels. So what happens is if you keep overeating every day, eating more than you can burn, eating more than you can store, your body is going to start passing the extra calories out your kidneys in the form of blood sugar. So if, you, if, you, if, you, if your body is excreting blood sugar because it can't make any more fat, that's a protection by your body to save your life. Because if you, didn't, if you don't back off on the calories, and you keep eating more than you're burning each day, more than you consume, more than you can burn, those extra fat calories will be made to a certain point. And then the body says, hey, if you don't back off, you're going to be as big as a building. You know, we're not going to allow you to keep making fat. And then 
what happens is insulin becomes non-effective. It becomes resistant. The insulin no longer will make fat. But because we're still putting it in our body, the body has to play its next card, which is it passes the blood sugar out the kidneys. So this is why they call it diabetes insipidus. In other words, it's associated with frequent urination and peeing and thirst and dehydration. And that's because the kidneys are utilizing body's stored water to offset the removal of all this all these glucose molecules through your urine. And it dehydrates you to do that. So you need to drink water to replace the water that you're peeing out to get rid of those extra blood sugar molecules. Now this can happen from somebody who's just overeating all the time. But what else can happen is when you get true diabetes, this excess blood sugar, removing it through the urine, it's something which happens even with small amounts of food because your, your system has been metabolically altered. It's been changed. It's been diseased where it no longer functions like it used to. And uh, this is where a lot of you are at. It's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm there. I, I would have told you this, that I thought this thing was rectified and, and, and I got rid of the type 2 diabetes and some of my first testimonials when I lost that weight and all my numbers got better. I thought I had this thing licked. I was, boy, was I in for, a, uh, uh, it's not true. So, you know, the blood sugar is, is amazingly difficult to change sometimes. And it can also be, uh, it's associated with a lot of factors, things that you don't even realize. Stress. Stress can create high blood sugar. Why? Because we need the sugar to fight. The sugar is a, uh, it's a molecule of energy. And if you're getting ready to go into an area where you're going to have to use your muscles, like to fight somebody or something, that preemptive, oh my God, this is coming. You know, you see it happening. Guy comes in, you're going to have to run or fight. Your adrenaline, your immune system, you know, your, your body pumps enormous amounts of blood sugar from the liver in the form of glycogen to make sure that you got blood sugar to power those muscles. Your muscles need sugar to work. So, and, and hopefully you either fight and survive or you run and survive. It's called fight or flight. So that would be the number one source of raising your blood sugar into your bloodstream because not, and, and not for nutrition reasons. You know, remember, blood sugar powers your body. Powers your organs, your, your thinking, your neurons, your muscles. Everything is powered by the blood sugar and proteins and fats, of course, but by the blood sugar. However, the body stores blood sugars in the form of glycogen. And you need those types of molecules for instantaneous energy. Now, fat is, is, is a stored form of energy for your body, but it's hard for the body to access fat. The body has to work really hard to burn fat. It will always, always burn blood sugar first, stored energy next in the form of glycogen. And then when that runs out, you might start getting into actually burning fat. Right? Now, now most people don't know this. So I'll give you the, what I explain to my, my clients all the time. So, you know, if, you're, if you decide that, let's just say that uh, you stop eating and uh, you're skipping meals. That's very common. And a person goes through being hungry and they're waiting and they're thinking to themselves, you know what, I'm hungry, I must be burning fat. That's a good thing. So they, so they, they go longer without eating. Now, this is not intermittent fasting. It's not fasting at all. This is just basically skipping meals and then eating more too much at another sitting. So what happens is when people skip meals, their body is utilizing the muscle tone and the uh, glycogen to give them energy. 
in the form of epinephrine and adrenaline is produced when you're hungry. And that releases blood sugar for your body's ability to survive. It's not releasing fatty acids. Fatty acid is energy which is stored in a fat cell which can only be opened up by hormones called glucagon. And to, produ to produce glucagon, you have to be hungry. So here's, here's, here's the example I give my clients. So, you, you know, we're sitting here in the room and God forbid you hear an active shooter. Pop, 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 pop. You know, you're like, oh my God, I hear somebody shooting. They're coming in the room. They're coming in the building, right? Now, we can all imagine that because we see it all the time on the news. Now, what do you think? Where do you think the energy comes to get the heck out of there instantly? It's, it comes from blood sugar. It comes from adrenaline and cortisol. It's the fight or flight response. This is the, oh my God, you know, my heart starts racing. Uh, you know, my, my uh, you know, you can, you can empty your bowels, you know, you can scare the poop out of yourself. There's all kinds of, your blood gets thick. But what happens is your body has to run instantly and it does so by the stored energy in the glucose. And that's, and you run. And it, you might have to run for a week. It could be a long time. Maybe you're being chased, not just a quick hour to hide. Now, that's why your body maintains a certain amount of glucose and glycogen. And that's also why it releases blood sugar when you're stressed, because it thinks you might need it to fight. So let's say you had to rely on fat for the energy to get out of that situation. You know, now you're, you're fat burning. You say you're fat burning, whatever that means. Okay, so the shooter comes in, pop, pop, pop. You hear the shooting and you're like, oh my God, somebody's coming in. And, and I'm like, you got to run. And, and the person looks at you and she goes, I, I, I don't have any energy. I have to wait till I'm hungry before I can run. What do you mean? You're going to die. I, I don't have the mechanism. My, my, my fight or flight's not working. I'm not going to be able to dump blood sugar from my liver and from my muscles. So I have to wait until I'm hungry. And even then, that's a really poor energy source for running and fighting and moving muscles. And this, this is a lesson that you should really listen to because you're not burning fat until you get through all of your stored energy stores especially when you're vigorously exercising. You are always going to burn stored energy first. A little bit of fat, if you're really good at it, but for most of you, you never get to the point where you're burning fat. You're really just cannibalizing the muscle tone. So this leads you to have high blood sugar all the time, just like me. So this is important to know this. Now, the best way to keep your blood sugar low is to pick foods that are low in sugar. I mean, common sense. Now, it sounds easier. It sounds, it's harder than it sounds because sugar is hidden in everything. So proteins and good fats. Very little sugar in proteins or good fats. So you can rest assured that if you're eating proteins and salmon and you're eating fish, and good oils and avocados and you're eating, you know, certain meats and stuff that have fat, you're not really going to raise your blood sugar too quickly there. Uh, it's when you move into the carbohydrates where you can start raising your blood sugar very quickly. And those would be the carbohydrates that taste like sugar, that are sweet. You know, a beet, beet sugar is going to raise your sugar levels a lot faster than a potato. But potatoes do have sugar in the form of starch. So uh, we got to reduce these inputs coming into our body to have less coming in. Or we need to exercise more because you can burn sugar when you exercise. If you're running and exercising regularly, not not like the one time you run from the, the shooter, if you're reg exercising regularly and you're managing your caloric intake, you're going to start burning sugar as a result of exercise. Now, exercise is something that is, you know, some people do it, most don't. And if you're dealing with type 2 diabetes, you're having high blood sugar, 
you need to exercise more so you can build a muscle tone, which will eventually take care of the type 2 diabetes, take care of that sugar. We could go on and on 10-hour podcasts on this topic, okay? What I would tell you is, and this is coming from a doctor, if you think you have high blood sugar, if you're having, you know, the symptoms of diabetes, you need to go to the doctor. If you don't go to the doctor, at least get a blood glucose monitor up at the Walgreens, at the, at the drugstore. They're 30 bucks. Comes a little finger stick. It's a little computer. You buy the little test strips. You know, you check your blood sugar. When I did that 10 years ago, that, I almost dropped the machine. My sugar was so high I didn't know it. And that brought me into, you know, into the doctors and getting the help I needed. All right, if you're interested in a consult, Consultation. You know who I am, Dr. Tred Rissacker, Slim Body Laser Spa. I'm located on East Ocean Boulevard, right across from the Fresh Market. I'm using a laser to help you quickly reduce outside subcutaneous fat. At the same time, I show an interest in you, and we will help you with food and nutritional planning. And, you know, we, we, we need to talk. Uh, the consultation is no charge. I do have openings today. If you're sitting bored and you don't know if you want to go to the beach or go fishing, 20. come down to the spa today and I'll go through this whole process with you. Uh, I don't charge for the consultations. You might save your life or save the life of someone you really love. 10. All right. So, uh, again, it's Slim Body Laser Spa. My name is Dr. Tred Rissacker. And uh, go online. Give us a contact. A. Weber. Love to help you. And remember, be healthy and, and be kind to each other. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.